Since the dawn of civilization, mankind has been preoccupied with its own demise, but never more than now. Life on Earth is caught in the crosshairs of threats both natural and man-made, homegrown and cosmic, immediate and long-term. In fact, this may be the last show you ever see. The question is not whether the apocalypse will happen. The question is how. The apocalypse is coming sooner or later. But what wave of catastrophe will the four horsemen ride in on? And will that final cataclysmic event be the work of Mother Nature, man, or an unseen force more powerful than either? In the next two hours, we'll explore the most plausible, the most popular, and the most frightening routes to humanity's end beginning with the scenarios that could kill us before tomorrow and working outward toward those that await us further down the road. There are at least four looming doomsday scenarios that could make today your last day on Earth. One involves the time bomb ticking underneath America's most famous national park. Yellowstone. It's a name synonymous with summer road trips and stunning natural beauty. But underneath its pristine landscapes, a monster is waiting to be unleashed. Few of the camera-toting throngs who visit the park each day realize they are standing on a super volcano that has enough power to blow them all to kingdom come. And you say, well, it could erupt tomorrow or it could erupt 50,000 years from now. But the point is, there's not a clock. There's not a little alarm clock that's one day gonna ding and the thing is gonna explode. The volcanic giant beneath Yellowstone is a monster waiting to be unleashed. If it erupts again with the same force as it did 2.1 million years ago, the consequences would be unimaginable. The first eruptions would be explosions of steam and ash. Then, within days or even hours, a series of colossal ejections of lava, ash, and smoke would set the sky ablaze and send deadly volcanic debris hurtling hundreds of miles. Ash is going to fall from the sky for days or weeks as though it were a blizzard. But this isn't snow. It's powdered rock, ash. Uh, and as that mixes with any kind of rain or moisture, it's going to basically turn into cement, a layer of cement that could be several feet deep in some places. The weight of that is going to do unbelievable amounts of destruction. Houses, buildings, bridges, they're all going to fall apart. The devastation wouldn't end at America's shores. The debris from the eruption would penetrate the stratosphere, drift around the planet, and cause global temperatures to plummet into what scientists term a volcanic winter. In any volcanic eruption, you're going to have release of a lot of steam, carbon dioxide, and usually sulfur dioxide as well. Um, those go off into the atmosphere. It's the sulfur gases that go up into the stratosphere and react with water and form little droplets of sulfuric acid. And this sulfuric haze lasts for a couple years, and that's what blocks out the sun and cools the Earth. Over a few years, Yellowstone's mega eruption would begin to transform the planet, turning deserts into tundras and rainforests into barren wastelands. The sudden freeze would paralyze what's left of society. It's obliterating the sunshine for two or three growing seasons that causes agriculture to fail and causes the economy to fail and causes people to starve. And when people starve, we know frequently it leads to rebellion and insurrection and, and warfare and, and just the whole system. It's the domino effect. Imagine our entire existence endangered by one cranky caldera. But here's the real kicker. Yellowstone isn't the only so-called supervolcano lying dormant beneath our feet. There are potentially seven supervolcanoes around the world, 
From New Mexico to Indonesia, Siberia to Japan, California to New Zealand. Beneath Yellowstone is a vast underground reservoir of magma that lies at a depth between 5 and 15 miles beneath the surface. This underground chamber of semi-molten rock is nearly 45 by 35 miles across, blocked from reaching the surface by the Earth's crust. But when the pressure finally reaches the breaking point, the stage is set for a catastrophic eruption. Supervolcanoes are not like the cone-shaped volcanoes that we all know, and it's kind of central casting volcano, and it pops out. Uh, supervolcanoes are entirely underground. Shifts in the Earth's tectonic plates may be responsible for Yellowstone's hotspot, but a definitive answer has yet to be found. It's still a controversy exactly why the Yellowstone hotspot is here and how it's moved with time. But what we do know is that there's a tremendous amount of, of heat and, and magma being created in this general area. If Yellowstone does decide to blow its top, a chain of events would unfold that haven't been seen on Earth in 75,000 years. The last supervolcano killed off on the order of 90% of the human species was back then. In today's terms, that would be about five and a half billion people. Think twice next time you get the urge to hop in your RV and head for Old Faithful. Yellowstone has blown its lid in a big way at least three times before. 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 640,000 years ago. At that pace, roughly every 700,000 years, we could be due for another Earth-changing eruption. In Yellowstone, you still see evidence for those large eruptions. Uh, the cliffs that are, are in this direction from, from me right now were formed 640,000 years ago during one of these super eruptions. And you'll see fragmental materials with pumice and ash and all sorts of material that was blown out during that eruption and it can be found all over this general area, those deposits. To fully comprehend the scale of Yellowstone's might, you would need to be miles above the Earth. Its caldera makes even the largest volcano seem like nothing more than a pimple. The caldera of a volcano is a crater that's left after a lot of the magma has emptied out of it and the overlying land has crushed down into it. In the case of the Yellowstone caldera, you're talking about something that's about 34 miles wide by about 45 miles long. If all of your conceptions of a volcanic eruption are based on pictures you've seen of volcanoes at Hawaii, uh, prepare to readjust. Even one of the most famous eruptions in recent history, Mount St. Helens, would pale in comparison to a supervolcano. Yellowstone's past has given us a sneak peek at what's possible when America's favorite national park decides to send a message from the belly of the beast. When Yellowstone exploded 2.1 million years ago, it ejected 2,500 cubic kilometers of molten rock, 6,000 times more than Mount St. Helens. It's hard to visualize 6,000 times, but I frequently ask visitors, have you ever written a personal check for $1,000? Most say they have. And then I ask them if they've ever written a personal check for $6 million. That's 6,000 times difference as far as buying power. Think of that in term of volcanic eruptions, and you can begin to conceptualize the forces involved. The only thing more frightening than the power of a supervolcano is its unpredictability. Even for the experts, determining when and where one will erupt is the ultimate guessing game. But there is one telltale sign to watch for. But if you imagine very hot rocks starting to move its way upward in the ground, that rock will be fracturing the other rocks, so you'll be getting hundreds to thousands of earthquakes per day. If apocalyptic visions of a seismic surprise are keeping you awake, perhaps you should spend those sleepless nights glued to your computer screen. 26 seismic stations inside Yellowstone are on a constant vigil, looking for any sign of underground movement. And now, 
you can see if the park is ready to rumble with one click of the mouse. Any general citizen can come in, go to the Volcano Observatory website, ours, any of the others, look at the seismic data, look at what earthquakes have happened, look if the ground has been moving over the period of time, and be a, a scientist on their own. All the seismic data is there immediately. Here's the park boundary, the Yellowstone caldera, and then each one of these different ones with the three-letter code is a seismic station. The tracking system may provide some limited warning of impending doom, but in the event of a supervolcanic eruption, advance notice won't necessarily translate into survival. When a supervolcano goes, uh, you're going to suddenly have superheated gas and ash shooting up 30 miles into the air several times faster than the speed of sound. There's really no escaping the volcano once it goes off. With nowhere to run, there's just one option left. Find a way to stop the eruption. Occasionally, we get ideas from the public uh, that we could drill in and somehow drain the magma or remove all the heat from the system and cool it down. Right now, there really is no way to prevent one of these kinds of eruptions. They're too big, the systems are too large, and the means that we might use are too expensive, too complicated, and there's no knowledge that they would actually work. But a supervolcanic eruption isn't the only force capable of sending humanity into the abyss. The destruction of mankind may not be the will of Mother Nature. The human race is all too capable of destroying itself.